Ah. Okay. Um, is it clear enough to you? Uh, yeah, you need to probably try a little bit harder this time. Uh, oh, okay, anyway, uh, so I'm Yang Yu, and uh, this talk is really, really, really short. So, in order to make it feel less boring, so I added some pictures of dogs. Yeah. So, um, it's just a very, very simple trick that I used at work, and just one single, single trick. Uh, just to uh, use GitHub modules to uh, help with your dream file. And uh, the reason for doing that is that uh, I got two motivations. Uh, number one is that sometimes you want to learn a certain framework. Like I was using Solidus. Solidus is a, a fork of Spree, uh, which is an e-commerce Rails engine. And it's really you know, the early stage, so I want to learn about it. Uh, by, by learning about it, I read the source code. And uh, sometimes uh, I also want to uh, patch the code a little bit, submit a pull request, and try to get it merged and update my local. So uh, the thing is, uh, if I try to do some modification on the module itself, and then um, I want to see the effect in my real side. So basically, I need to link the uh, link the source code with my real side. But if I do gem file, that means it's fetching from remote. So that's the motivation number one. Yeah. Um, I actually, number one got point two and point two. And motivation number two, so uh, we have some private extension like inside our company. So we also need to put the private repo in the gym file. And the private repo is not published to the remote. And uh, uh, also, actually, the first two points is that uh, it's very simple. You can just put uh, gym, gym name, and then git, the so git repo, that's all, simple like that. Uh, actually, the last part is, uh, yeah, I think the two points actually a bit duplicate, but yeah, I prefer quite enough. So basically, yeah, update the code and see it in app. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned it twice, it feels like this. But, okay, anyway, uh, solutions. Solutions is, uh, actually, uh, uh, there was there were two solutions. Uh, number one is to use uh, what they call uh, local gems. So basically, uh, in the gem file, you can do a, a config to make sure uh, to make your gem what you put in your gem file to point to a local location. And the config is just shown. And there, if you are more interested, you can just uh, go and read about this blog post. Is uh, so basically what it does is uh, actually I can oh no internet. Okay. Oh, by the way, there's a game. Yeah. Um, the, okay, I got no internet. So, um, I, I didn't prepare the demo, so I just tried to describe it. So basically what it does is, uh, uh, you create a file called, uh, this uh, bund uh, in, your, in your folder, you create a file called bundle slash config, and then you put, uh, you put what you want to use where is the gym location that you want to use for a certain gym file. And then basically what it does is uh, when you load the file, when you load the uh, app, it will use your local location instead of the gym, uh, instead of the gym file from remote. Uh, simple like that. But the issue, uh, the issue with this approach is that, okay, number one is that every time you do some modification, and you want to update, you need to update your local GM uh, manually. You need to do a, at least do, do a bundle update. And uh, number two is that, and, uh, for example, if you are working in a team and then uh, you did something, you did this setup, but other people also want such kind of solution and then it's a bit tedious for other people to do this kind of setup. You need to type in a couple of commands Blah blah. Yeah. So. Mm, so how? Yeah. So second solution is uh, get some modules. So basically, uh, you can create a folder to store your sub modules, and then a git sub module is just to like in a git repo, and then you, if you do a, a git sub module add, eh, where is it? Uh, git sub module add your repo, 
uh, and then the path to the folder that you want to add some module. Basically, it creates uh, it will check out the project and uh, create the uh, check out the project and uh, put it in your local Git repo. I can show you a demo later. And then in your dim file, you just do a gm. Uh, yeah, for this case, I use solid for example. So it's a so it's a pass is a pass to your local gm. That's it. Yeah. So the dot becomes a full point. Yeah. Quite cool, right? Oh yeah, that's all. <laughs> so let me just show you a quick demo, just to show you how it works, like in effect. Hmm. Okay, let me make the font size larger. Ah, gently, okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's large enough. So I try to use my voice without the amplifier. So, yeah, it's called loudspeaker. So basically, eh, oh, wrong. Oh, I was trying to create another demo. So, um, Yeah, so basically that is my Ah yeah. So basically after you do a git some of the ad will create this kind of config in your git sub module. So basically other people check out the project and do a git sub module in it and git sub on the update will just automatically update the Check out the uh, check out the progress. What you specify in the sub module, and then basically what it does is we'll just put the oh that's too much. So uh, for my case, I put in the James folder, and then we have James one and James two, and then in my James file I have. Uh, it's trying to reference to the local path. Simple like that. So if you run, you will use the local path, and whoever who check out the module, you can all use the local path. And what's more, you can do like this. Like if you do some modification locally, mm, oh, it was in the jump. Yeah. So basically, it tells that okay, you got some, you got some, uh, some commit in your first jam, some commit in your second jam. You can add the modules and then you git commit. Basically, you update your local jam. That's it. Yes. You're about where I was 18 months ago, but I, <coughs> we tried that, uh -huh. and, and we tried a variant of this that had the laughs about. Three, four years ago, published a series of articles. Here's how you can do this, all relying on a lot of Git repos. The problem is that you lose all the features that make gem management work really well when you do it that way. You've got, you want to have two apps that use different versions of the same private gem really hard to do with Git submodules. Really easy to do if you're using a private repo service like GemFury. GemFury lets you publish gems just like rubygems.org does, except they're private. You need authentication to be able to access them. But like we've got five different gems. We've, right now, right now we, up on, uh, up on, uh, we've got 14, 14 different builds of five different gems that various apps use. And we manage those on Gem Fury just the exact same way we would on moviegems.org. It'll make, I mean, before I started trying to make that work using Pivotal's method, which is a variation on yours, I had about twice as much hair as I do now. Oh, okay. That must be a long time ago. Um. Okay. If, if, if you're in this, and, and, and the 
simplify, and the, if you're doing this and the simplified gym management works for you, then this works like a charm. It's great. It's only when you start getting more complicated that you start wanting to wanting to buy shares in Mailbox. Mm, yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah. Okay, and that's when you need a solution like like Jim Fury, and there's a couple of other competitors out there, but they are the one that everybody talks about. And I've been using them for 18 months now, and I have yet to have a problem. Yeah. I think uh, I haven't tried the what they call Jam Theory. Jam Fury. Jam Fury. Okay, yeah, I haven't tried the Jam Fury yet. I think it will also help resolve another issue that sometimes you you develop some local gems, some private gems, and then the private gems got dependency on each other. So one will resolve the yeah. that issue also. We we can use third we can use third party CI with our gems on Gem Fury. Yeah. We cannot do third-party CI using this. Um, actually, you can. Uh, let me see. Where you can. You can if you give your, if you, you give need, your credentials. You need, ship, you need to ship the repo for the repos for the gyms up along with the apps that use them. That's the only way we were able. That's yeah, if you give the credentials. We were able, able to make it work. If somebody can educate me, that would be useful information. Mm -hmm. But the only way we were able to make it work was to ship the gym code up with the app code that used it. And that sort of defeated a lot of purposes. Uh, but uh, there's another gaining point, which is its motivation number one. Like, this tool, although it might not be a good practice, like, it might not be a good engineering practice, but the sub module does help with this it two points. It's the job done. It's a good enough practice. Yeah. Started. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, like, okay, like when we are developing the private gems, yeah, when it's in small stage, it's not a lot of interdependency yet. But yeah, when it grows old, then. But bear in mind that you will get there at some point. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Actually, that is something I was looking for also. More questions? Okay, uh, if not, thank you, Yang Yi. Yep.